Hi, welcome to the fourth episode of my new series where I'm going to teach you how to get better at speaking English and also thinking in English. This is Susan Broder from Speak Languages and Travel the World here to help you improve your English with minimum effort and maximum benefit. So first of all, I'd like to emphasize that I'm trying to get you to practice your speaking because the more you speak, the more likely it is that you'll think in English. And if you're thinking in English, you're not making so many mistakes and you're also feeling more confident. So let's get straight to the three strategies that I recommend you implement today, as I'm going to give you three strategies in each of these lessons. So in today's lesson, strategy number one is to practice spelling, practice in particular spelling your name and your surname, but also maybe the street where you live and generally practice spelling a lot when you're out and about. Now, why will you say is spelling important? That's something I did at primary school. I'm not interested. Well, actually, spelling is a fundamental thing because when we call abroad or when you're traveling, you'll book a hotel and the first thing they'll ask you is, oh, Uh, could you please spell your surname or could you please spell your email address? Could you please spell the street where you live? So you'll be at a loss. Um, and therefore, it's very important to practice your spelling and it should come quite naturally. Therefore, you don't have to think now, is it E or is it I? Because depending on your original language, it may be difficult and confusing. So make sure that you know your name, your surname, the street where you live and maybe your email address really off by heart, really well. And then hopefully if they spell something to you, you'll be also able to take note of it because this is the other thing. They might read to you exactly which street you have to come to and you won't know and they'll spell it to you. You won't be able to write it down. Therefore, make sure you practice your spelling. It's boring, but it's very important. Strategy number two very important is also numbers, the numbers you presumably know. But what about longer numbers? I've actually made a video on longer numbers just to make you understand how easy it is. And uh, in the comments below, I'll put down the link to the video because it helps you and it makes it really easy to learn how to say long numbers. Because if you're away for work, or if you're doing a presentation, showing a graph, explaining numbers, you have to be able to say them confidently and not shy away from saying them. I have lots of students who will read something to me and as soon as a longer number appears, they'll get blocked and won't know how to say it. This is something you have to overcome and the only way to overcome it is to practice. As with spelling, you can actually practice it on the go. If you see the name of a shop, you can spell it out loud to yourself. If you see the number plate of the car in front of you, you can try and read the whole number out. Therefore, you don't need to always sit down to practice but you do need to practice so that you become quite confident saying long numbers out loud. Strategy number three is to practice telling the time. Obviously, it depends on whether you need to tell the time for an informal appointment, where in the UK we would say, uh, see you at half past eight. Uh, maybe the Americans would say, see you at 8.30. In any case, you have to feel confident. And uh, if you're not sure, you can also ask a person, do you mean at uh, 8.30 if they say half past eight? And you must make sure you pronounce it correctly, not say half past eight, as many of my students say. The L before the F is not pronounced, therefore half past eight. And if it's an official time, the train leaves at 8.45, you say 8.45. You don't need to say quarter to nine. And don't forget that for times, there's also AM 
and p.m. We tend to use morning a.m., uh, afternoon p.m. rather than the international times, which, of course, for international flights and international trains is used, but commonly isn't. So, again, you should get used to practicing telling the time because you're going to have somebody giving you a business appointment and you may turn up late uh, or early and that would not give a good impression. So, let's summarize. First of all, practice your spelling, make it second nature. Secondly, make sure that you know your numbers very well, that you can say them and also understand them. I had a very embarrassing situation once when I went to, to France and I was a little bit rusty and French numbers are horrendous. I asked the price of a hotel and she gave me a long explanation and I just looked at her and said thank you, went out and kept repeating these numbers in my head until I managed to get a piece of paper and I wrote them down and that's where it clicked, where I really understood how much it cost and I realized it was a good price and I went back in and said yes I'd like the room. But that was because I was not confident with numbers. So it's really important to get confident with numbers. And the third thing is to learn to tell the time confidently too. Don't forget to write in the comments below any experiences you have implementing my strategies. Subscribe. Also hit the notification bell because that way you'll be notified of any new videos I produce. And I look forward to seeing the next video. Bye.